Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tevach, a good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer Tanya. This program is made possible by Rena Lights LLC, and it is an honor and memory of Rabbi Yosef Halevi Weinberg Olav HaSholem, Rabbi Moshe Pinchas HaKoyen Katz Olav HaSholem, Rabbi Yael HaKoyen Khan Olav HaSholem. It is also in schus and merit of our Abzev Yecheskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz, Le'erich Yom and Vashanim Tevis for many long, healthy years. So in the middle of chapter 12 of Tanya, the Benini, and in a uh, fascinating example, based on the verse in the book of Kehelis, Ecclesiastes, the Alter Rebbe explained that in this battle between the divine soul and the animal soul, which is prominent in the Benini, but the Benini has that additional resource that every human being is born with by nature, called Moyach Shalat Alev, self-control, which animals don't have. Other parts of existence don't have. So armed with that tool, with that resource, with that inherent resource, like we learned, that is beteva tel dose, beteva yitzirose, a person is born with that ability. The exact lotion is Then he repeats. That a person has always the power to restrain and to refrain and to control themselves. So the example and the proof he brings for this is from the book in Kehelas that says, very easy. Shlema Melech says, "Vidi isi, sheyesh yisrin, hachochma min asichlus, ki yisrin er min acheshach." That I've seen that there's an advantage, a superiority of wisdom over folly, which means the wisdom of the divine soul over the nonsense or the folly of the animal soul, like the superiority of light over darkness. Where there again we see naturally, without effort, like you said, beteva, beteva, the nature is that light automatically dispels darkness. A little light. It's all automatic. doesn't require any effort. So the same thing, when you allow the divine soul to shine with its light, with its wisdom, chokhmeh, over the folly, over and foolishness of the clip of the animal soul, it also automatically dispels it. And that's moyach shal ta'alev. And you see, intelligence naturally dominates over foolishness. The only reason that foolishness can, can win is when you don't allow intelligence in. We all can behave like fools. We all can have our moments. But if you bring wisdom into the picture, you have that reflection. So any given situation, a reflective mind will always be able to temper and control an impulsive heart if you allow the mind to speak. That's the, that's the if. But in a Bainani, he's activating the Moyach Shal Ta'alev, and therefore you have that type of dominance. So too, reading inside again, the same way, a lot of the stupidity or foolishness or folly of the klipa and sitra of the left chamber of the heart will be automatically pushed away by a even a small amount of divine clarity. Now think about it. Let's talk about that word clarity, because light means 
clarity. Because when you think about it, yes, it's true even physically. You have a very dark room, you bring a little light, it right away dispels it. But let's speak about light as in clarity. When a person is confused and you don't know where to go, you're in the dark, so to speak. And then someone comes and says, here's the direction. Here's guidance. Here's a GPS. It doesn't take any effort. It's not like the darkness is going to say, no, I don't want to follow. Because at the end of the day, the darkness and the confusion is ignorance. All it is is the absence of light. As soon as you bring light into the picture, it automatically gives you that clarity. You're lost in a, you're driving somewhere and you're lost. And someone tells you how to go. It's not like a battle to say the, the voice in you that says I'm lost is going to fight. Like we discussed fire and water. Fire and water are two adversarial forces. Enough fire can extinguish large bodies of water or evaporate large bodies of water and a lot, a lot of water can extinguish a, a big fire. But when it comes to light and dark, it doesn't work that way. A little clarity, darkness is not a match for that. So when a person is confused and then you have clarity, the clarity opens up your eyes. The same is here. The divine soul is constantly very clear and connected and aligned with a vision of what life is supposed to look like. Think of it like a person who is a healthy person, has healthy attitudes. Those healthy attitudes guide you. Now, how is it possible that a person should behave in an unhealthy way, whether it's physically, emotionally, psychologically, because you don't know. Either you got lost or you never found a way. Someone didn't educate you. You're ignorant. So a person may say, here's a piece of food I eat, and that food causes problems. It's toxic because you didn't know. Had you known, you'd never eat something that would be destructive. Or you minimize the fact that it's destructive. So it's all part of ignorance. But as soon as you're aligned, the healthy person has a healthy attitude. So whatever situation comes their way, that healthy attitude is giving that that clarity. So now when you have confusion, you don't have clarity, and then someone points out to you, this food is destructive, this behavior is destructive, doesn't take much. Who wants to be, do something that's destructive? The divine soul is aligned to the healthiest type of living, living up to the purpose and mission for which we were, create, we were created. The animal soul experiences dissonance in that area. It's disconnected. It focuses on self, its own ego egocentric needs. Now that will has a voice and says, hey, sleep a little longer. Take care of yourself. Indulge in your own pleasures. Indulge in your meals. So on its own, if there was no counter force, that's what we would do. But there is. There's a divine soul that's aligned. But furthermore, there's moyach shal talalev. It's not like a divine soul that is in one place and the animal soul in another place. They come together and there's a mind. The mind with the divine soul rests because it's part of the, it, it dwells. Mishkin, like we learned in chapter 9. Where does the divine soul reside? In the mind, in the reflective mind. And in the right side of the heart. So it even affects our emotions. That speaks up and says, here's clarity, my friends. Here's direction, here's guidance. Here's how to be aligned and healthy. So the unhealthy voice doesn't have a response to that. It could still want to drive you, and we'll soon learn that it didn't disappear. Its voice is very loud, but it won't dominate your thought, speech, and action because the clarity automatically dispels the ignorance and the foolishness of the animal soul. That's what we learned. So you're never going to have a person who's going to say, I'd rather be stupid than wise. Yeah, some people would prefer and say, I'd rather not know than know because it's more comfortable. But overall, which person is going to say, I choose stupidity over wisdom? Fire and water, you could say, I choose one over the other. So it's essentially stupidity or foolishness and folly of sikhlus is no match because it dispelled automatically as soon as you bring light into the picture. Okay. And he brought the proof because, like Razal say, Elim ke nichnus bay ruach shtus. So that's proved that the animal soul and the sins that it and the transgressions are coming only because of ruach shtus, which is another word for sichlus. That proves it. Okay. From the chokhmah, the wisdom, 
like Yisun Ha'er Min Ha'cheshech, he said, Ki Yisun Ha'chochma Min Ha'sichlis, Ki Yisun Ha'er Min Ha'cheshech, Chochma. What is the Chochma referring to? The wisdom in the divine soul that resides in the Moya, Ha'sher Etzein Elim Shalavada, that it desire is to be the soul controller over the city and to manifest in the three garments, thought, speech, and action of Tayag Mitzvah Sater. As we learned in the previous class. So there you have it. So then, of course, the question is, so why is he called a Benini? This is, uh, this is probably po- very powerful. Self-control to the point that it doesn't affect thought, speech, and action. So now comes the other side. Remember, the Benini is the paradox. Even though there's the self-control and light is dominating over darkness, but it's not changed the voice of the animal soul. The light is shining, but the darkness has been dispelled. But the darkness and its root of it, the root, the, fo- the foolish voice of the animal soul is still there. And now we're going to continue and he's going to explain why. Going back to the beginning of the chapter, both sides. Then on one hand, he has complete control over his three garments. On the other hand, the nefesh of the bamis has not been eliminated. And the tzaddik has been eliminated, even transformed. Now he continues. V'afal pikein. Nevertheless, after everything we've just said, that there's total mastery of thought, speech, and action, because even a light, little light has dispelled a lot of darkness. A little wisdom has dispelled a lot of foolishness of the animal soul. Nevertheless, he continues. V'afal pikein ene nikre tzaddik lal. He's still not classified as a tzaddik at all. So klal can mean altogether not a tzaddik, or could also mean tzaddik klal, that no way, not a tzaddik gomer, and not a tzaddik sheinah gomer, not a tzaddik sheinah gomer, and for sure not a tzaddik gomer, like we learned in chapter 10, the two types of tzaddikim. So this person cannot be classified as either. There the difference was that the tzaddik sheinah gomer, the love is not absolute 100%, and therefore the transformation and the, and the, 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 Repulsion to evil and darkness and not being aligned with God is not complete. But it's still, the animal soul has been eliminated. It's not been totally transformed. But here we're talking, it's not called a tzaddik at all. In the Nikra tzaddik, why? Because this advantage that we just spoke about, the Yisrin from the Posen Kel, Yisrin Eir Menachesha, Yisrin Achoch Menachesha, Ki Yisrin Eir Menachesha. This Yisrin, this advantage, this superiority of the light of the divine soul, Nefesh Alikis, Alachesha Vesichlus. Shalaklipa Nidcha Memele, he repeats what he said before, over the darkness and the foolishness of the Klippa of the shell of the animal soul, which was naturally, automatically dispelled by the light of the divine soul, this superiority is its effect, its power, its control is only over the three garments that mentioned above. of thought, speech, and action. So you've brought a light in, that clarity is giving you enough power to not allow thought, speech, and action, in other words, to activate, to actively do something that is not aligned with what you're supposed to do as a healthy person, using the analogy I gave before, that's in control. However, that's levushel, but not v'leib mohusav atzmusa, but does not help on the deep core of the divine soul, al muhusav asmusha shalaklipa. So there's levush is an outer expression. We say muhusav asmusha. We're talking here about the faculties. We discussed already muhusav asmusha is not etzman hashama. Compared to the garments, is the faculties of chabad chagas nehim meichen and midis, the cognitive and emotional faculties. That's active in the animal soul, even if it's not affecting your active thought or speech or action. That's still active. So the Muzvat Musa of the core of the divine soul has not impacted the core of the animal soul. 
Going back to the example of the battle, the battle of the two kings over the control of the small city, the human being. So you could have one that's actively in control, but that doesn't mean there isn't a dissenting voice. The animal stall is still active and still telling us and still speaking to us. However, by invoking the control, the natural power of self-control, the natural power of light over darkness, you're not allowing it to affect your thought, speech, and action. But the personality has not changed. You can persuade someone that they should agree with you in practical, but it doesn't mean they fundamentally agree with you in concept. They can still fund- totally disagree with you. Like we said, the king has not been vanquished. The other opinion. It's just not governing. So the, like we spoke about the example in a government where the majority governs, but there's still a minority, a dissenting minority. Because of the, of the divine soul, the core, the very core, Mahusabat Musa, as I explained, this Mahus means the personality, Asma is the core, but it's the, it's the essence of the of the of the person. In this case, the faculties has not affected the deep core, Mahusabat Musa of the Klippa. So this is goes back to the concept we've discussed, just to briefly sum up, that Chsidis talks and understanding in general everything, etzem and ispastus or etzem and giluim, the core of something and its expression. And they're very different. You can control the expression, but the core can remain intact. You have a cloudy day, very cloudy day, or a solar eclipse. So the sunlight, the expression of the sun, is covered up, or somewhat covered up. But the sun itself is, remains ent- entirely intact and bright. That would be Muhuzvat's Musa of the Shemesh is just as strong as it was whether there are clouds or no clouds. But its expression, its extension, the sunlight can be compromised, can be limited. You can put heavy curtains, opaque curtains, to the point that no light comes in altogether. If someone didn't know, they could be sitting in a completely dark room even though there's a bright sun outside. That's where it affects the the so-called the levushim, the outer expression. Musavats Mus is a whole different thing. So even though the king is dominating as a divine soul, because of his power of self-control and light over darkness, but the Muhusvats Musa, Muhusavats Musa of the klipa, of that shell that conceals, that has not been affected. And he continues on. Because in the Benini, in this individual, where the animal soul is active but not governing, in the Benini, in the animal soul's deep core of Klippe, and here when we talk, Muhusavats Musa of Nefesh Abamis, we mean the faculties of the animal soul, but specifically the emotions of the animal soul, because that's where the animal soul resides, the left side of the heart, the impulsive emotions. So the animal soul also has a mind, but the mind is being controlled by its desires. So it's a mind that's been slanted, been subjective, biased and prejudiced by its emotions. So he says, in the Benini, the Muhusavats Musa, the deep core, we can say the personality and the core of the animal soul that comes from the klipa of the left side of the heart, has not been displaced at all. It's still there. The king that's fighting the, animal, the, the, the divine soul, the other king, he's still active. He's still trying his best. He's not winning. and He's not controlling or governing the city, but he's there. So there's an opposition. That's leinitcha klal. And the truth is, until Mashiach comes, when when the spirit of toxic spirit will be removed from existence, and the shechit of the Yetzirah, the Yetzirah will be eliminated, then there'll be that fundamental change, which comes through all the way of of all our work over the generations. But as long as that's not happened, so therefore you have not pushed aside or displaced that core of the Nefesh Abamis. Only its expression.
And now he goes back to referring to, if you recall, he said that the animal soul is still active, except during davening. He brought Krishna, Krishna and, and, and the tefillah. Let's go back to the language. What did he say? So then, the animals, the divine soul has additional power. We're not talking about Moyach Shalat Alev, the additional Esrotsen, opportune time, that is a special energy. So now he's going back and referring to that. And what does he say? The Lein Itcha Klalmim came of Bebeini, has not been displaced at all from its place in the Bainini, in that left side of the heart, Acharat Fila, after Davening. Because during Davani, you can say it's been put to sleep or it's been numbed or it's been somewhat, I can't say displaced, but not just controlled. Mo'yach shalta lev, the voice is there, but you're not letting it affect and govern your thought, speech, and action. During Davani, it's stronger than that because Davani has an additional force that doesn't allow it even to speak. But after Davani, it reawakens. So think of the enemy king meaning the animal soul, there are times where they're not trying to launch an offense. They're subdued. And then they're launching an offense. And even then, the nefesh of the kiss in the bainani has the power to, sub- to control it. Restrain and refrain. But that's akhirat fila. She'ein rishpei eish avas Hashem, like we learned before, when it's fiery, the fiery flaming fire of Avas Hashem, and love for God, the flaming love for God, So during davening, this voice is silenced, the animal soul's voice, because of this reason. But But then you don't have that flaming fire. So then the only thing you have to rely on is the natural dominance of light over darkness, of the wisdom of the animal, divine soul over the folly of the animal soul. But that only controls So from here it appears, and that just appears from earlier as well, that when a person during davening, you also have a way to affect the kachis, of the of the animal soul by silencing it. Now it's not being silenced, but it's not allowing to be go- to govern either. So what's the story after davening? So then, where what happens to that natural love? The Al Tareb is going to qualify. What happens to that natural love? Because remember, the divine soul has natural love for God. Not just Mayach Shal Talev, the ability of self control. So he says, Ki'im, after prayer, what's the situation? But rather, after prayer, the only thing you have, but only, Teichi Rotsuf Ava Mesoteris. The Rotsuf means it's like um, pay, 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 uh, paved. When you pave something. So teche, the insides of the bainani of the nefesh of the kiss, is rotsuf ava misuteris. It's inlaid, it's, it's, it's inlaid in him inside with love. This is from Shira Shirim 310, Gimel Yud. And it's called ava misuteris, it's concealed, it's dormant. This is going to be a theme that he's going to speak about later in chapters 18, 19, and 44. So this is the first time he actually introduces Ava Mesuteris, but he's bringing it in the context that after davening, it's only Mesuteris, but it's there. So this is qualifying that even though the animal soul is active after davening, but you cannot speak about the Ava Mesuteris, is still there. So, the, but, so and and so let's continue, okay. So 
So since it's there all the time, the divine soul is also active, not just the animal soul. We're not talking about now the governance. The governance we know is controlled by like light over darkness. But as far as these two forces, their forces are both in, in full power. So there is this Ava Mesoteris. However, it's Mesoteris. Because it's concealed, so therefore you also have the animal soul's faculties. And that's why, Ozai, since it's concealed and not expressed, that's why the light, the oil of the Chachm, of the Nefesh of the Kids, does not affect. What, if, what it affects is the expression in thought, speech, and action, but not the core of the animal soul. And that's why, Ozai, and as a result of that, that after davening, that intense love that was lit up and ignited during davening, because of the Esrotzen of the Moich and the Godless that happened during davening, but now, once that fire has subsided, that intense love has subsided, then it's possible, Yochelias, it becomes possible for the stupidity. Now he calls him the Chsil. Melech Zokin Chsil, he says in the, also in Ecclesiastes, in Kehelis, Beis Yudala 2.14. So the sickness, the foolishness or the stupidity of the fool is now capable, is able, and it's possible this evil of the animal soul, that's when this foolishness can be revealed in the left side of the heart. That means that voice is active. To be expressed in the left chamber of the heart. To desire the temptations of everything in this physical world. Whether they be permitted, heter meaning indulging, let's say, in a kosher food, or God forbid, prohibited. And to the point, as if he never davened at all, as if he had not prayed at all. That's to the extent of what happens after davening. So during davening, the fire of the divine soul is alive and passionate. After that, that has now subsided. So now the only thing you have left is Mayak Shalta left to control thought, speech, and action. But the etzim, the essence of the divine of the animal soul is active, as if you didn't pray at all. Which explains that paradox that we find that people pray and they are all excited and inspired, and then it dissipates. Doesn't mean that it wasn't real, because that's that special moment has closed, that door has closed. But now we have to exercise Mayak Shalta Lev over thought, speech, and action. And we'll stop here. We'll stop here and we'll continue the next year. This has been My Life Chassid is Applied. You can find this program and all previous programs, all archived, the podcast at tanyaapplied.com. You can also submit any question you may have. I thank you for all your comments and your questions. Everyone have a good tabach and be well. This has been My Life Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasupply.com for archived classes and more resources.